Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Joey from Tested. Joey, our producer here. We've had him on a couple times to go behind the scenes and show you how we make our content here. Now in the past, we've talked about some of the cameras you've used and tested, and also some of the audio equipment. But today we're gonna talk about lighting. Now, lighting, it's actually a complex topic. Everyone does it a little differently. Yes. And you have a lot of considerations that you'd use and you've practiced with. Um, but just to lay out some terms, you know, lighting, there's a primary light that you use, that you think about. Yeah, when you think about like the most basic lighting setup, you think about uh, three-point lighting. That's your key light, your fill light, and your backlight. Um, that's kind of how we approach this. So we're a small crew, so we generally approach like that. We use one key light, maybe one fill, or maybe two fills, and then a, you know, a rim light or a backlight and then a background light, which lights up the background. And for those different roles, we actually have used different types of lights. Yeah, uh, we have used two primary lights for most of our setups. You'll see these here, like the Kino Flow and the Airy Tungsten lights. These are two very different lights. Uh, the Kino is all fluorescent based and it's, it just kind of floods out light. And you control that with like egg crates or diffusion silks that, that soften up that light. And then the Aries, which are all tungsten based, that just blast light out of these Fresnel lenses up front, and you can spot or flood those. But that's a much more hard light, and um, you need like silks and some diffusion gels to really kind of control that in the way you want them. Well, to best illustrate how this lighting setup and what you do to light each of our shots, I thought it'd be fun for you to give the viewers out there a little bit of a walking tour of our set and the different setups we have, and then you can explain to them how you light those environments. That sounds good. All right, welcome to our set. This is, the, uh, this is the live and podcast set that you've probably seen in tons of videos and podcasts. Uh, we'll start here with the, the Kino lights that I've used to set up. So I talked about the Kino Flow, the, the fluorescent lights that kind of just pour light out. And um, for this set, we had some trouble because we're so close to this background here uh, that we actually did something kind of different and used reverse key lights with these Kinos. We'll start in front here. So if you look up here, we got two quad banks and we got one big double bank, and that's all just pouring down daylight. Uh, daylight's important because we do a lot of like cell phone and tablet stuff, and the light that those push off are more or much more cooler and and kind of give this uh, bluish tint. If you're if you're balanced for tungsten, which is a warmer light that the Aries push off, then you'll get this really blue glow. So we wanted to we wanted to compensate for that by putting all daylight bulbs into our uh, Kino flows. So. The light that these pour off are very even and kind of light everything up in this flat, even way. Uh, but like I said, we're so close to the background that it spills a lot over there. And that tends to make the whole image look a little flat. So what I did was I added these two Kino flows as what's called reverse keys. And what those are doing is they're aimed at the subject who are sitting here, most likely looking this way to talk to each other. And that light is gonna come and, and even, or, and uh, give them some nice highlights on this side of their face and also some highlights in the hair. Also, that highlight will help separate, the, uh, separate them from the background. Uh, with the background, I left the spill there and I did add two Airy 350s that are just shining a little bit of light on the poster and on this tested banner here. And that helps give it some shadow, give these, give these things on the wall some shadows against the wall, which again, we're, we're going for depth and some contrast there. So that helps with that. Uh, and then I black taped or I black wrapped all those lights up there to kind of reduce the spill in the background. So that's all the live set. For the stand-up stuff that you've seen us do, we do a like a mixture of both. It's a, uh, it's we use the the Aries as our key lights and then the Kinos as our fill. Um, so this actually isn't an Aries, but this is the same type of bulb. There's a there's a tungsten bulb in this this big box here that's has a diffusion. Uh, basically a diffusion cloth in front of it and then a blue gel to make that daylight balance because tungstens by, nat by, uh, by nature are going to be tungsten based which is a much warmer temperature. So this will be acting as a fill or as we have to as our key. This guy's our fill and then we use Aries for some rim lighting and some back lighting on the subjects again to separate them from that background. And if you're actually interested in hearing more about how I lit this setup, uh, I actually wrote a whole blog post about it with a little bit of video on kind of where I place the lights and how I diffuse them and uh, you can check that out. The third light we use on the floor of conventions most often is uh, LED lights. And that's these little guys here. So LED lights is kind of like the third style of light. And what those are are panels of, if you look closely, it's just tons of little LED lights that all shine out kind of hard light. Usually people put little diffusion gels in front of it because, because of the hard lights and also because every single one of these light sources are adding a little shadow to something. And those shadows kind of look a little funky if they're if they're left unchecked. Uh, and this actually leads pretty well into our next light that you saw Adam Isaac uh, review back in December, 
which is an LED panel that does some interesting stuff with the technology to eliminate that, um, that look of like multiple light sources adding more shadows and it, it diffuses it in a way uh, that's pretty interesting. So we'll go there now and talk about that light. All right, Adam, I love these lights that you brought in. Uh, that one that you showed last December, yeah, that's awesome. And getting this big one in has been like just a lifesaver for like remote shoots and just the uh, various subject lighting. So now that you've had a chance to play with both of them, like what have you been using these guys for mostly? Yeah, so this is the one that I brought in for the favorite things video. This is a 10 inch LED panel, and this is the one that Photo Deox sent us to try out. It's an 18 inch monster <sighs> model. What these are called is the Photo Deox Flapjack series, which is kind of whatever. Okay, we'll go with it. <laughs> uh, but um, they're really great lights. And so what makes them interesting is that. Unlike the other LED panel that Joey showed you, these aren't uh, populated with a bunch of LEDs pointing out. Yeah, it's the first thing I noticed was like, there are no visible light sources, right. like tiny little light sources everywhere. Yeah, and so what they have instead is a ring of LEDs pointing in along the edge, along the outer edge. And so it's pointing in to um, the rest of the panel, which is just filled with diffusion material. And so what you get is this really even light. Like soft, yeah. Soft, like soft even light. light. And you don't get any of the extra shadows that you get from the multiple little LED point sources. And and they're also super small. Yeah, they're, they're small. Like, like when you start talking about diffusion, you start thinking of like dim light. Like these get yeah. really bright. Like, yeah. So we can sort of, they're fully dimmable. This one is daylight balance. This one is a dual color model. And so you can, you can adjust it. Um, all the way from from 3200 to 5600. So yeah, tungsten to daylight. Yeah, uh, and you can plug them in to the outlet, or you can run them on these Sony uh, MPF batteries. It looks like so the big ones got like a V mount slot, so you can use like big production batteries on. Yeah, there's two of these Sonys. So they've been super versatile, and I mean, you can they're they're. I think what we've been using them most for is when we're traveling outside of the studio. Yeah, like Adam's shop, we had it set up just in the side, just to get out some like nice light through. Yeah, because Adam's shop's strange because you have. You have your natural light from the skylight, then you have available light from his his workbench lights. And also, if you have to fly with lights, oh, um, yeah. it's a miserable experience usually, but this you can just sort of throw in a bag. Yeah, it was super easy to travel with. I DP'd on a short film directed by my friend John Finger, and it was a very small set, and because of the, the form factor, I was able to squeeze that light into very tight areas or just take it off the, the light stand completely and just hold it and like place it on the floor and, and bounce light up. We use it as both a fill light for certain compositions, but also I was able to crank up the power and use it as just the main key light. I, I think that the light quality is gonna be sort of similar to like the Kinos, where it's gonna be soft. Yeah. Um, uh, compared to um, like the tungsten bulbs, one huge thing about LEDs is just the, that they don't get hot. I mean, they get oh, slightly yeah. warm, but compared to other older lights. You can turn these off and throw it in a bag like right away. Yeah. You don't need to wait uh, 20 minutes for everything to cool down. Yeah. You don't need gloves. They're getting a little warm rather than burning your skin. So they've been great. Uh, I'm really happy they sent us this one to play with. I guess that's the other thing. The, 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 the main drawback is that you have so fewer LEDs because they're only around the outside. Mm -hmm. And so it's just there's gonna be less light uh, compared to uh, an LED panel that had it populated with just like hundreds of LEDs yeah. pointing out. So they're not gonna put out as much light, but this one puts out enough light for pretty much everything we've needed it for. Yeah, I shot with this over the weekend. I shot a little stop motion thing on a table and we just had it on a C-stand, gobo armed over and just cranked it up on tungsten. We had another tungsten light doing our key light. Yeah. And just it just gave us like a wash over the whole thing that was yeah. real nice to work with. So they've been great. Yeah. Thank you for bringing them in. I'm glad we have this big one now and uh, cool. yeah. hope to use these a lot, a lot more in the future. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys next time.